and take the log or the ln of both sides, it doesn't matter, and you did this. How many of you flipped and did a log? No? You all went to exponential? Okay. Even better. Now, when you bring this down, here's the problem. This is in parentheses. You would just have to distribute this guy, which is absolutely doable. And then you have an equation. You're just going to isolate your x. You're going to add this to both sides. Now remember, you can't add the, the pieces because they belong to the ln. So it's going to be ln 64 plus 7 ln 4 equals this guy. And then you're going to just divide by 2 ln 4. Do I have too many ln 4s here? Nope. Okay, now, one thing to remember. If you don't use your fraction key in your calculator, or you're on the 83, you need to remember to keep these things in parentheses. Because what's going to happen is it's going to follow order of operations, and it's not going to be what you want it to be. So always hook up your numerator, hook up your denominator with parentheses. Hello? Do you have to distribute the 2x minus 5? Uh, if you do it this way, yes. Did you divide by ln 4 first? Yes. You could do that first, too. And then add 7 and divide by 2. You could do that, too. Either way you want to do that, you could do that one. Um, this is probably the best way. We also did them intersecting in graphs. We did this when we did exponentials. Um, this is the probably the better way the easier way. This guy again also, even though you have an 8, it's still a base. So isolate that, divide by 3. Remember when you want to work with the base E, you have to use ln. So you have to take the ln of both sides. This is going to come down here and your ln E is going to cancel out. That's one of your properties that cancels out. And you're left with a nice little equation. Now, this is my actual, if I ask for exact value, this is my actual exact value. Once I put it in my calculator, I have to round. But I just always have you round to three places, unless you by chance say exact value, which I won't say on these guys. Okay? But there are a number of ways you could do this. As long as you're working sound with a sound method, I'm fine. Here's the second way we talked about, when we have one log, you can't get rid of that log. You can't put a log on the other side. So you have to take this one, use your back, use your log equals exponent, whatever one you like. I like log equals exponent. I told you I also like the one below gets raised to this, equal that. That's another easy way to go through this one. 4 to the third power equals this, and simply solve it. Again, this is exact value when you put this in your calculator, three decimal places. Um, these guys, you can take the log of both sides if you like to here either, to here too. Bring down this x, and then just divide by ln4. You can do that too if you like. It goes nicely to an exponential one because 16 is a, has a base of 4, so that one works nicely. Whenever you deal with a fraction, use the concept of the negative 1 exponent. Take its reciprocal and start there, and then find the square of 49, or the breakdown 49 into 7 squares. It's much easier. It's easier than flipping the other one over that has the exponent, the variable. This guy, you can almost see that this is 3 cubed, this is 4 cubed, so what does x have to be? Great. Right there, both cubed. And again, you could even take the ln of both sides and work it from there if you like. There's a number of ways you can do these. Stop me if you have any questions. You have to be able to do at least one of those ways that we talked about. Okay. Again, these guys, 
They have one log. Now, sometimes what happens with the log base 10 is they don't put the 10. So, bless you. It looks just like that. And this is where I get students that just stare at this and say, well, what do you want me to do here? Don't forget, the default base is 10. Same thing if I use E. The default base, if I use LN, the default base is E. If I just said this, my default is E. So make sure you fill in those bases. Flip this, 10 to the negative 1 equals X. To the negative 1 half equals X. This guy, I might have missed the direction part of this. This just is a simplified. Bring, you can't solve for X. Bring this down. And L and an E is a property that will cancel itself out. They're reciprocal, they're inverses of each other. So they will cancel each other out. Same thing that happens here when you raise to the LN. Because technically you bring it down. And this just reorder it. E and LN will cancel itself out. Starting at number 11, this is where you can't bring them down to the same. You can't bring this guy down to the same base. So you might want to take the LN or take the log. Notice in one of them I did the LN, the other I did the log. Just to show you, you can do either. Whenever you're using E, you must do the LN. And like I said the other day, most college books strictly just use LN. Because that's more the universal one. Anything that, that troubles you up here? What parts are hard? Yeah, coming up. Yep, coming up. But any parts on, on right here that are, are troubling, we can just break them apart and walk through them. <laughs> number six. Well, up there, was this number six? Seven. Um, number six. Okay, this guy, it, it, if you see this, if any time that you have raised to a power, you could separate this like this. You could separate it. So what you might want to do here is this. Line these up. 27. Do I have a base of 3 for 27? 3 cubed. Do I have a base of 4 for 64? 4 cubed. So what is my x now? Since these are the same, what is my x? 3, right? It's almost like setting them equal to each other and then saying, well, then the exponents must be equal to you could also take the ln or the log of both sides, bring that down and divide. There's nothing that says you can't take the log, bring it down and divide this mess by the log of that. You can absolutely do that. What's nice about your yellow calculators is you can use your alpha key, your alpha fraction key. So you can kind of put your fraction in there without having to have all these parentheses. The 83s, you have a lot of parentheses going on. Okay. Again, we've got no logs here, but we have an exponent. So isolate it first. First thing you want to do is isolate it. Now you've got a couple of choices here. Be careful. This has parentheses here because this exponent only belongs to the 2. Once you get down to here, before I divide it by 5, you can absolutely take the log of both sides and then use your product rule. It's a little bit longer. So... Since we divide by 5, the only thing that I'll say is you can do this, but leave this in this fraction unless it terminates, and this one will terminate, but unless it reduces to a fraction or terminates. You don't want to do any rounding in the in-between places. This one will terminate. You could leave it as a decimal if you wanted to. I just leave it as a fraction because if it's a 3, then obviously you can't terminate it. So once you get to this point here, and you say, how am I going to get this down? You can take a log of both sides over here, a log or ln. This will come down. A shortcut rather than distribute this whole mess, and Carlos taught it before too, divide by this first, but leave it like this. Yeah, it doesn't look very pretty. I don't really care what it looks like, but I don't want to resolve all my rounding until the very end. So leave that like that, and then you're just going to say, okay, subtract 3. 
get a negative x, you're going to change your sign. So this, at the very end, is when I'm putting in my calculator. At the very end, do your rounding. Just follow it step by step. This one wasn't so bad because what is this, 2, 24.5, 24.7? Twenty-four point seven. You can absolutely use twenty-four point seven instead of use a fraction. You're allowed to take the log of the decimal. It's just I, I tend to keep them in fractions because not always do they end up terminating and then nobody sees what to do with them. Okay, now fourteen. Fourteen looks pretty yucky too. But remember, I have a, a variable up in my exponent. The only thing that will get it down is the log. And that variable, that exponent belongs to that whole thing in parentheses. Leave this like this. Just leave it. It looks bad, but just leave it like that. Take your log of both sides, bring it down. You want to solve for t. So this is a factor, this is a factor. Divide by your factors. One thing again, when you put it in your calculator, it's a little bit cumbersome to put it in your calculator, but remember, if you don't have a fraction key, you also need to put parentheses around that denominator. And your calculator automatically gives you a parentheses when you use a log. Sometimes you see the setup is the same and you say, but I didn't get that answer. Watch your calculator. Good? Okay. This next one, a little bit of a thinker problem. So before we do it, don't look over there yet. Let's break this down. Let me, let me switch this around. Give me one second. Can we get through this one and then I'll let you go. How's that? Okay. This is a good thinking problem. How many of you actually found those factors? Okay, so I'm going to take the e out of here, and I'm going to do our normal little x squared minus 4x minus 5. Basic quadratic. It, right? How would you factor this? Negative 5 is a positive 1. Okay, what did you put first? Oh, x. Why X? Think out loud. Why did you say X? Yeah, just think out loud to me. Tell me how you got the X. How did you know this was X to the 1? Not an X squared and an X to the 1. Like, how did you know X1, X1? What made you do that? Okay, because when you multiply them together, you've added those exponents, right? And don't they always become the same? If I did x to the fourth, what would they be? X squared. Oh, so x squared, x squared. If I did x to the eighth, what would they be? X to the fourth. Oh, so aren't you basically cutting this in half? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so let's do the same thing here. Cut 2x divided by 2. It's a regular e base instead of an, an x. So here's my exponent, just cut it in half. So if I say 2x divided by 2, isn't it x and x? And when I add these together, is it 1x plus 1x, 2x? Right? Now, what else gives this away when I do this? Whatever this is, isn't my middle term the same? See it? When we do a quadratic, isn't my middle term the same as my first term there? So, this is a hint right here that this has to be e to the x. I just want you to think it out a little bit. It's a challenging question, and I'm going to give it to you on your test, but it challenges you. It makes you say, when I look at this, say, well, I don't know what to do with the 2x. So look what you would do. Make yourself a little pattern. And what happens is we're so used to just saying, just like they did x and x, because it's x and x. We're, you're right. It is x and x. But think out loud. Why did you make them the same? But, but then he told me, because he added them up, and they added up to 2. So they both had to be the same. So, ah, oh, we know we're dividing this by 2. So we find a pattern. So now the same thing. Get your factors. Set them both equal to 0. 
Oh, look at that. You've got a nice little uh, exponential function here with a base E. So I'm going to take the ln of both sides, bring down my exponent. This cancels out, and x is equal to ln 5. This guy's same thing. Subtract 1, take the ln of both sides, and can I, in my calculator, do a log of a negative number? Five. Try to take the ln of negative one. Doesn't work because my log isn't my log only positive, not zero. Don't I only go from not zero but from zero to infinity, right? Alaysia, you can go. I just wanted to get past this one. So this one we automatically have to reject. And this guy, it's a, again, it's an equation. You can plug it in and try it. KJ, are you okay with this? Was there a, another one or this, this is, are you on this one? Okay, everything okay with it? it ask me, because I'm sure there's other, other of you guys that are saying the same thing to yourself, like what is she doing? The most important part was getting those factors. Breaking down that 2x. Well, I thought that was the most important part. Okay? Even even confirming this in your calculator. I, I put it in my calculator, and I looked for when y was 0. So I did a zeros on it to see what this value is. And yeah, that value is what I found out the great way. So that's another good way to check, isn't it? A quadratic, so can I look at my quadratic and see exactly where my roots are? I can always tell where my roots are, 5 and 1. I can see where my quadratic goes by looking where my zeros are. Shouldn't I be able to see that too? But oddly, that doesn't look like a quadratic, and you're right, it doesn't. But I do find a zero there, and that's the zero I found out the break with. Challenge yourself to do that. When I, when I find the math is, you, you get to use a lot of patterns all the time. Find your pattern. And, and one of my favorite things is hint. Keep it simple, stupid. To keep your problem simple. Because if you get a, a very complex problem, you say, what the heck is that? Make a very simple one. Find your rules and apply it. And it'll work. Okay, my wind is still here. All right, so let's continue with this. So here's when you have a log on one side, you're going to flip it to an exponential equation. But this doesn't have a base. But I know for the natural log, my base is e. So e raised to the 2.1 gives me 4x. Solve for x. And down here, too, 10 raised to the second power equals this argument, x and z minus 3. Okay, if they didn't put the 10 and they did this, this is confusing because they didn't give me a base. Same thing like the ln, they didn't give me a base. But the ln has an e, e base, the log has a 10 base. Put the 10 in there. I still put the 10 in there so that I can see it when I go to change it. So flip this and solve. 18 was where we start to have logs all over the place. If it helps, put a line down your equal sign. You want to get to where you have one term, one term. Then we can use that property and take the logs away. You can either add the logs to both sides with one term, one term, or take them away. So in this case, we say a subtract. What was I doing when I subtracted my exponent? I was, what will you do when you subtract your exponent? Dividing. Here's my quotient rule. Take out the ln and make a quotient out of it. Now I have one term, one term. Take your lns away. And then you have a regular algebraic problem. Cross multiply, it might not always be pretty looking. Cross multiply, we had a factor. In both cases, these rejected, so we had no solution. Now, if you even graph this in your calculator, if you graph this in your y1, 
and you grasp this guy and your wife too, you'll see they never connect. They don't intersect. Have a time to point. Because there was no solution. So you think it's a little bit of work, these guys. Right? Multiply both sides by that denominator, x plus 1. Same thing. I like to cross multiply. Maybe hook this up first. And gather your life terms again. You have a quadratic. Whenever you have a quadratic, you're going to factor. Or maybe not factor. Maybe you have to use your quadratic formula if you can't factor. Or complete the square. You learn the number of ways to find those factors. You have to be able to use them. Good. You tell me. You tell me when it's good, okay? Now, this one's no different. We have that lines all over the place. So break down your equal sign, combine these guys. Oh, what was I doing when I subtracted? I was dividing. Make a division, a quotient. There's your quotient rule. Take out your ln. Cross multiply, whatever you'd like to solve it with. Now, when you get to here, I should be able to factor this, but I can't find factors. So when we can't find factors, we use the quadratic formula. So you're going to use your quadratic formula. Now the, the square root of 13 is a little bit more than 3, right? It's not yet 4, but it's a little bit more than 3. So automatically if I do 3 minus 3 something, don't I get a negative number? And I can't take the log of a negative number. And there's my LNX, so I can't take the log of a negative number. So don't even bother to resolve the negative side. Just cancel out your negative side and resolve your positive one. Kind of guesstimate that. If it's over 3, it's a little bit closer to 4. So that's going to give me a negative answer. And that LNX says you can't use a negative answer there. A lot of times when we do these problems, we learn to keep throwing other things back at you that we've learned along the way. But you learn how to apply them as you need them. And you can put it in your Y1 and your Y2 and see that they actually intersect, see that they do have a solution. So then you say, oh, I can't give up until I find the solution. And then I think we have one more, right? One more. And this guy. This guy was the hard one. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't get this one. Yeah, I didn't put that one to school. Yep. So let's just start this way, though, right? I have to bring this down to one log. If you got this far, I'm happy. So we say, okay, what was I doing when I was adding my exponents? I was multiplying. There you go, right? So I make this a multiply. Now, this is my argument right here. I can't cancel out that log, and I can't put a log on the other side. So I put my base E, and I flip this to an exponential equation. And boy, does this exponential equation look bad. It looks like this. Is that a zero or a D? The zero. I moved it to the other side because chances are we probably needed to factor this guy, right? But we definitely can't factor this. This really, really looks strange. I put a number in here so that you see how strange it actually looks. But I really can't factor this. I can't take an x out of here. There's no x in here. So the only way to really do this guy was if you left it like this or put this in your calculator in your y1 and find when y is zero. And you, you could do a, a 
second zero on that. So you can do that. All right, we want to determine when an investment of $1,500 that we started with will accumulate to a value of $3,750 if the interest rate was 8% and we compounded monthly. So back when we did your exponential functions, we said this was our equation. We want to know when does it get to be 350 if we invest 1500 remember your formula, 1 plus your rate, we're compounding monthly, what was that T? And when we did this back, when we did your exponential functions, we said, we don't have a way yet, yet, to pull down your variable, so we graphed it. And our graph went like this, and then we saw where they intersected. Remember doing this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we know how to pull this variable down. We pull it down with a log. Be careful because this exponent only belongs to this guy. Don't turn around and multiply these two things. It only belongs to this. So, what we should do is take the log of both sides, use our product rule, and then move everything over and solve for t. But I find that's a lot of rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. So we're going to take a little bit of a shortcut. We're going to divide this guy out of here. But all I want you to do is reduce it down. Whatever you do, don't, if it's, if it's, a, if it's terminating, that's fine. If it doesn't terminate, don't round it. We can put this in, I think it does terminate to 2.5 or 5 halves. Either way you want to go, 2.5 or 5 halves is fine with me. I tend to leave them as a fraction because if it wasn't able to, I want you to see we can still leave it as a fraction. There's enough rewriting in this that you don't have to rewrite too many times. So now we have one argument here with the exponent. We're going to take the log of both sides. Can I do log or can I do ln? I can do log. I can do either. So this time around we'll take the log, since as you said log first. When we take the log, it's going to enable us to bring this down. Okay? You want to solve for t. I want to know when. t. This is being multiplied by this humongous mess. So I'm going to divide this by everything else but the T. Notice I'm not resolving any issue until I do my final one. This has a lot of rewriting to it. So remember, this is going to need an extra set of parentheses down here. When we find T, this will be the exact same T that we found graphically. This one, the graph probably wasn't as hard to do as this one was. It's not that it's hard, you get a lot of writing. So legally, if you do this the right way, when this goes to a product, you have another log of 1,500 that you have to subtract over here. And you're rewriting this like three or four times. So put this in your calculator and tell me what you get. I think it was 11 point something. I don't have the answer. Mm -hmm. 492, thank you. 11.492 years. And if you look back, that's what we found when we did it with our graph. So now you know how to use your log. We can solve these algebraically. And when we do your test next week, I want the algebraic proofs. Can you check it in your graph? Absolutely. All right. Let's try another one. Yep, we're going to do the next one. The other two? We're going to do that one too. Alright, so this one is on the same packet. It says, determine when an investment doubles. Remember what we did to double? We said 2 to 1, right? Mm -hmm. It's compounded continuously. So our formula was the perp. E to the point oh six. And again, I want to know my when. There's my T. 
we put this in your calculator and we graphed this. And we found the intercept. So now, we're going to solve it algebraically using your log. This I have an E. What do I have to use? Natural. So I'm going to take the ln of both sides. Okay. Now you can take down your exponent. Ln because we have E. The E has to use the ln because it's the natural base log. And I'm not opposed to you making this your first step here. If you can do this in your first step without rewriting that, that's fine with me. If you go, if you go right to this one, that's fine. And if you even saw that the LNE canceled out, I'm fine with that too. As, as little much as rewriting as you need is fine with me. Solving for T, you're going to divide by 0.06. Okay, I think this was 11 something also, wasn't it? 11, 12, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, what we would do. Divide by 100. Just like we did up there. See it? We just divided by 100. Made our life a little easier. 200 to 400. Divide by 200. Okay, let's hit this next one. And it's only going to leave you like a few to do. Okay, this came from your other packet. This came from the packet where we said y equals ab to the x. A, your initial, B, your rate, T, your time. Now, if we double these two, your half-life, B was a half. Because we have a population that's decreasing at a certain rate, this is where we did your 1 minus R. Because we have a certain rate that is decreasing. So we have set up, if you find it in your package, we have set up that when this was 50,000, with my initial, 1 minus my rate, when is this going to happen? I want to know when. Now again, that's where my exponent is. We did this exponentially, and we graphed, and we intersected. Now, algebraically, and we're going to cheat again. Instead of taking the log of both sides and separating that into a product, and you can absolutely do that, the numbers are large, so be careful of your zeros. This only belongs to this guy, so we're going to divide both sides by this. No, this is your y equals a to the bx. A times b to the x, I should say. Now, reduce this guy. Leave it like this. Don't round. Now, if you want to, you could resolve this part and make life easier. It was probably 0.9 what? 9? 7? 2, 5? 6, 2, 5? Okay, you could do that if that's e any easier. Okay, so now what should I do? i got to get that exponent down. Log of both sides. Isn't it my power rule brings my exponent down, so I need it to say log. Whether you say log or ln, it's absolutely fine. I divide both sides by the log of 0.9625. And this will tell us how many years this took. I think it's only been 30.
see if it matches up to your exponentials. Anybody come up with it yet? What is it, Carlos? So I had seven, right? I told you it was seven. Yes, you guys made me change this. Oh, six two five. Okay, that's what happened. Nine seven six two five. I had seven, but I left out the six. So I knew this. I knew this was in the thirties. So, 30-something? 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 